Joining me now for a look at how the local markets fed on the day, Owen and Cornwall, executive partner at Kunzi Invest. Thanks for joining us, Owen. Awesome. Let's talk about retailers today. ShopRite, one of the top performers overall. It seems that the general retailer sector is up on, on the day, 1.3% when I last looked. Uh, so, so what's happening on the retail front and what are the views from your side in terms of where retailers are headed? Look, on my, on my side, I've said, it, I've said it for the past about week odd when uh, we've seen international sellers come and smash the sector. Mm -hmm. I said it was just really rubbish how the sector got sold off. Um, you had Masmat coming through with numbers that were not so great. And that stock wasn't sold off as much as the rest of the sector was. We've seen this kind of pattern happen in the past, um, in the past four months. The retailers have had probably um, three rounds of aggressive selling. Where you've seen a name like Mr. Price come from about 133 all the way to 115, 16. You know, Woolworths coming all the way from about 67, trading all the way down to, to the lower 60s. You know, I just feel like it's, um, you know, someone out there probably has a big sell program to do on the mm -hmm. day. And, uh, you know, they subsequently smash these things out aggressively. And you just hear the sentiment start to change in South Africa. Mm -hmm. These things are overvalued. These mm -hmm. things need to correct. But two, three days. But you don't buy that argument. No, of course I don't yeah. buy that. That's yeah. why these that's why these stocks are trading up where they're trading now. Mm -hmm. You know they're offering good value. You know the the whole um, the whole market is looking great in my view. We're in a relatively decent bullish pattern at the moment. So we are busy taking advantage of all these selling all these selling patterns that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. I mean that's why you're seeing Mr. Price trading significantly better today. Woolworths traded close to six to six having went down to 58 and a half odd in the recent selling off. I mean, what happened to that negative sentiment? It and talk to us about MTN and Vodacom right now, because MTN, a top performer today, seems that there's a strong demand for MTN and Vodacom uh, slightly on the back foot. Do uh, you think that that momentum will continue? Listen, I mean, I think Vodacom probably guys are not expecting um, miracles out of their numbers which come through on uh, on Thursday. They give us a trading update. But uh, with MTN, you know, obviously there's just been this news that, you know, the the, uh, the recent investigation into, into MTN's involvement with Texel, um, you know, they're kind of exonerated from that. So we've seen quite a lot of buying come through from the stock all the way from 173. And surprisingly today, the stock went all the way to about 182. Mm -hmm. There's quite a lot of offshore demand in my view in the stock. And I think uh, guys are just selling Vodacom to buy, uh, to buy MTN. Yeah. Let's talk about the miners today. Um, overall, before we get into individual miners, uh, what's your sense as to comments coming through from politicians like Trevor Manuel uh, talking about giving us perspective on the global mining sector right now, also saying global mining is in chaos. Susan Chibangu basically saying we need to all work together to, to achieve a sustainable mining sector. Uh, how have these been interpreted? Look, I mean, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been positively ac uh, 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 accepted by the market. And I think this is exactly what they needed to think about, you know, two weeks ago when they had that whole teeth with Mr. Mr. Griffiths at Amplats. Mm -hmm. You know, they should have come down a bit and said, listen, we think this should have been handled A, B, C, D, instead of having all that talk about mining licenses being revoked. You know, and it, it was an unfortunate situation. It's better off now that they're coming out with a more reconciliatory uh, tone. And, and um, you know, Trevor Manuel came through and said, guys, come on, let's, let's calm down a bit and sort things out. And I'm happy that the government and uh, the, 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 the unions and the corporates have actually had a meeting to start discussing and mapping the way forward. That's mm -hmm. what we need. If only we could just start marketing South Africa ahead of um, the different parties' uh, interests. You know, the yeah. unions on the one hand, the corporates this side, and the government on the other end. I think we should just work together together and, and push South Africa as a great um, investment destination, especially well, for mining. It does seem like the government is engaging in a different uh, in a different way, in a, with a different tone with the private sector right now. Um, Amplatz getting 100 billion rand from, from Anglo-Americans saying that they want to invest that in the company, given, of course, they've gone through a difficult time. We saw the, the loss that came through uh, in the results yesterday. So that one piece of good news for Amplatz, which is really struggling right now. But what is interesting is they're not pulling away from their investment in Amplatz. Yeah, no, they, 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 they're definitely not pulling away at this stage. But I think there's still more details we're going to get about the Amplatz restructure. And I think down the line, you could probably remember that the moratorium at the moment on the um, uh, release of these 14,000 workers is only for about 60 days mm -hmm. while engagements continue. But that has been put on hold That's until they come up, the task team comes up with a plan uh, and they're looking at the restructuring plan. And so that that 60 day moratorium has been put on hold. So the timeline is basically longer now. Exactly. But you see, the, as long as we're getting engagement coming through from Amblas and the government, and you know, I think it sets a good, uh, a good base for discussions with the rest of the industry. My fear, though, is that, you know, if these don't work out, you know, 
strike season is going to happen again and we're going to have mines being closed, etc. Mm. But, um, you know, a good surprise was the results we got from Lonmin recently. You know, even if there was that whole Americana situation last year, the numbers from Lonmin were not so negative. So you saw, you saw Amplats or rather Lonmin get beat up all the way to, to, to the 53 levels. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not all gloom and doom. We just need to get a, a more coherent um, discussion going on. Yeah, and uh, Anglo-American, of course, the big bugbear has been Minister Rio, and uh, talking Absolutely. about saying that they are open to a partner on the project. They've had to write down the project. Uh, cost have escalated threefold there. Do you think it's right for them to, to invite an equity partner potentially into, into this project? Yeah, but that's obviously a very scary project. It's cost them uh, probably about eight and a half billion dollars, they're estimating, and uh, they've written down about four billion dollars of cost out of the project. So, my, my take is who's going to go in and want to partner with uh, with Anglo American in this in this project? This is almost very uh, it's a risky um, it's a risky project in terms of uh, trying to get shareholder value from it. Mm -hmm. There's no it seems the cost just keep uh, keep on increasing. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no end to this. So what so does that's that worry. mean about Anglo Anglo American share price right now? Would you be buying the share? No, uh, not at this stage. I think Anglo American has got a lot of surprises, you know, and most of the time it's always to the downside. So unfortunately, I really prefer staying staying with a name like Billy Zone, mm -hmm. where there's more consistency, where, where you know, they, they, you remember we still have a management transition going on at Anglo American. Mm -hmm. So before we see um, how, how Mr. Kutzefan is going to turn the company around, I think the, 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 the premium is going to be preferred in, the, in Billy Zone as opposed to Anglo American at this stage. Yeah. yeah. Now, SAP Miller pretty much flat for today, but uh, interesting that they Chinese joint venture, their partner in China, has acquired a company called Kingway Breweries uh, for, for 864 million US, US dollars. dollars yeah. And just looking at that, I mean, they have a, they have a presence in some of the fastest growing affluent regions in China. Guangdong. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about Absolutely. tell us about your thoughts on that. No, look, I mean, it's great. They need to continue uh, getting more. They, you see, if you become as big as SAB is now. The, the only way for you to grow is to keep acquiring the smaller brewers in, in, in different regions globally to inc increase your global spread. So I'm happy that they've done this uh, transaction in, in, in China. It's definitely going to increase um, their hectolitre presence across, uh, across China, especially if they're in a, a region where there's quite a decent amount of growth expected to come through. But unfortunately, I mean, for, for, for SAB, this is probably not as big as um, a, a big a number as would influence the share price to move on the upside. Yeah, I mean, you buy or hold I'm a, I'm a buyer of SAB. Uh, the current backdrop is, is definitely uh, beneficial for, for SAB, especially given the weak currency that we've got. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, if, if, if we don't see an improvement in the currency, we could continue to see SAB uh, benefit from, uh, from, from, from the weaker currency.